Hello and welcome to this coverage of the Fistful of Dice Netrunner Store Championships taking place in February 2016. This is the final of the losers brackets of the double elimination rounds. On the left, Jeremy playing his Ian Sterling deck. On the right, Laurie Poulter playing ETF. So this is actually the second time these two players have met in the elimination cuts. Uh, in the first round of the elimination rounds, Jeremy knocked Laurie down into the losers brackets. So both players, and they actually played the same matchup as well. It was uh, the ETF versus Ian matchup. So both players know exactly what the other is up to. They know what to expect out of the decks. Laurie uh, not going to be caught unawares by uh, Jeremy's really resource-heavy off-campus apartment supplier deck. So in the previous game of the uh, coverage, you would have seen Jeremy go to a timed game with Simon Johnston. Uh, which Jeremy was all set to win. It was actually a tie, as, the, as time was called. Jeremy was set to win as top seed, and Simon able to get the winning agenda on that final turn uh, to go into the grand final and knock Jeremy down into this loser's bracket. So Laurie uh, just icing up and installing. Jeremy's got the uh, full guy. It's New Angeles City Hall on the supplier. So, Laurie not really doing a lot in the way of giving out tags or punishing tags, but the New Angeles City Hall just uh, saves clicks essentially on um, siphon runs. Now, if Laurie's going to take anything away from the first game, he probably knows his best bet here is actually to rush. Um, Jeremy's deck does take a while to get set up. His breakers of very money intensive playing peacock uh there's an overmind in there if i recall another full guy in store the off campus apartment was just going to draw a card so laurie just about to break the 20 credits mark um if he can just get some ice to start creating a score and serve and get something out that'd be really good I was protecting that remote there. So, Dr. Lovegood. That's going to allow Jeremy to uh, selectively turn off the text on some of his installed cards, which essentially means Drug Dealer will allow him to draw a card and not lose credit each turn. Uh, you can also use Dr. Lovegood to turn off the source which means that it becomes harder for Laurie to score but uh, has no penalty at all to Jeremy. Film critics, the usual way of getting around the source is drawback to keep it in play. But um, yeah, Dr. Lovegood, just a uh, another viable alternative to that. Install some ice, install an upgrade into that remote. Uh, Laurie just just checking the wording on Dr. Lovegood there. Dr. Lovegood, um, one of the mini faction cards from Data and Destiny. So, been around for sort of three or four months at this point, but not something you actually use a lot of play. So you can understand why Laurie might want to just double check how exactly how that works, what the wording is on it. So another underworld contact comes into play. Uh, that's just on the supplier at the moment. Another drug dealer as well. All these connections going on the off-campus apartment, which is just allowing Jeremy to keep drawing more and more cards. Every time you install a connection on the off-campus apartment, you draw a card. Uh, the supplier will also get in connections put on him each turn to feed onto the off-campus apartment at the start of Jeremy's turn to draw even more cards. The drug dealer's dealing him cards. So, despite being a deck that needs a lot of setup and a lot of time to maybe get to where it wants to be, 
all this card draw just accelerates it, keeps it going. Supplier installs the resources for two credits cheaper, which in most cases means they're actually installing for free. And it's it's just a deck that really propels itself forwards. If you can get set up nicely, get the off-campus apartment and supplier early, you're just off to the races straight away. There's a Logos there, so supplier can actually do resources or hardware. And then Corn and Flavors, which is um the real the massive boost piece of economy that Jeremy's playing. Um, late game he's capable of bringing in 14, 15 credits at a time which is just a ok so Laurie installs and double advances a card if that's a GFI that's fantastic right now take a 3 point lead would be absolutely amazing so Jeremy installs the Logos off the supplier, which means if Laurie does score that, he, uh, Jeremy's going to get the tutor for whatever he feels is most necessary at the time. Comprise employee, a dice and mem chip, and an RD that makes it all go on supply there. So, just a ton of cards to be able to court will. It's an ABT which Laurie's gonna fire. Oh, a whiff on all three, that's that's harsh. <laughs> uh, Jeremy jokes there as Laurie just confirms there was no uh, no ice in those three. Jeremy just saying, uh, that's good. Uh, possibly not how Laurie's feeling. So Laurie's comfortable on money. Jeremy's got no breakers out. If he's got another agenda in hand, throwing it down, just forcing it through could be a really good play. So yeah, install and install a something else in the remote. So that's a Jackson Howard. Okay, so Dice and Mem chip comes in. So that's an extra MU and an extra link, which means there's probably an overmind on the way now. Because he's got one MU from the Dice and Mem chip, one from the Logos. In fact, that may well be the card that Jeremy tutored for with the Logos. More cards on the supplier. So there's an E3 feedback implants. Yeah, so there's the overmind. That's going to come into play with five counters. Overmind, really nice sort of answer every thin card. Especially if you can combine it with E3 field pack filters. Uh, you do have to pump it for strength. It's plus one, uh, one credit for plus one strength, base strength from zero. So you do have to pump it to match strength. But you can uh, just spend a, one of the tokens that it comes with it. To break a subroutine and then use E3 feedback filters to pay credit, uh, just a credit for each additional sub. Same old thing comes into play. So Laurie has got an upgrade on HQ. That could be a Chrisium or a Caprice. Um, Ash doesn't seem likely in this matchup. It's the Peacock as well. So that's Laurie's turn. Laurie draws. Scores out EBT. Uh, firing again getting two ice this time so that's a viper I can't actually see that bottom card under the uh, glare of the lights unfortunately Laurie's just deciding where these uh, cards are going to go okay so that was a viper and a victor yeah I believe that was victor yeah that is yeah that's victor So Laurie's got the Peacock, which could break Victor. He hasn't got a direct answer to the Viper, though obviously Overmind can do it. Or he can just go for the Traces. Oh, I didn't see, but I think... Yeah, so Jeremy has tutored for a card. You can see his deck up there just been offered to Laurie for the cut once Laurie's decided where that ice is going. Logos again... Everything about Jeremy's deck is just built around efficiency. 
So Egan generates money from being behind. He doesn't mind being behind because he, he kind of expects to be to set up all his various uh, cards. Logos is really good because it's actually tutor for exactly what you need as the corpse scoring. Uh, it's just another way to ex just accelerate your tempo, just like the off-campus apartment, like the supplier. All these various bits just adding up to make Jeremy's Ian Jack just really streamlined. Laurie just joking there that uh, that's the first mistake he's made. Seen Jeremy make. Jeremy actually uh, did some fl did some uh, some of his starter turn triggers out of sequence, which potentially cost him a credit. Was uh, Laurie quite happy to just let him change that around? So there's a data dealer. So data dealer is not really a card that. Um, Jeremy probably wants to make a lot of use of, but he can certainly use it for burst economy if he needs to to get in somewhere. Just setting off any agendas he does get. Also, it can actually be used to sell agendas to make sure you stay behind to really leverage Ian's ID. Okay, so we've got the siphon coming down. So hopefully we're going to see what that upgrade is. Is it Chrissium? Is it Caprice? Uh, as I said earlier, Ash doesn't seem likely. Could be a breaker bay as a bluff, but breaker bay obviously won't actually do anything. So break the viper. That's an architect. Oh, he gets a credit from the compromised employee. Yeah, match strength. Break or open mind. So if this is Caprice, Laurie has to res it now. So he's not res that. Uh, wall of static okay. yeah pay free break that okay. is Laurie gonna res uh, so Laurie doesn't res any cars doesn't res that upgrade so yeah Jeremy just gains his 10 credits Laurie loses 5 really curious to know what that upgrade is on HQ I think it's got it's either it's either a caprice or a bluff, I think it's gotta be. Uh, or the or the Chrisium of course. Though possibly would have rezzed the Chrisium in that last situation. So emergency shut down on the uh, Viper. No, on the architect, sorry. So that's gonna be Laurie's turn. No res from Laurie. Um, what's it? Is there a gender in that remote? Let's just check in his eyes. Install hedge fund advance? No, it just takes a credit, okay. So the E3 feedbacks are in play now, which can just leverage those last two tokens on the Overmind. Essentially, it means the Overmind, instead of being able to break two subroutines, can now actually deal with two pieces of ice, even if it is multi sub ice. Jeremy's yeah, just pondering his next move. Uh, there's another compromised employee comes into play, direct into play, no, nothing off the supply this time. So here comes another account siphon. Yeah, so Jeremy just let the traces fire on the Viper and spending the compromised employee recurring credits to get through. Laurie reses the architect again. Yeah, Jeremy, free credits, an overmind counter, and an account, a credit on E3 feedback filters. Spends the last overmind credit to break the wall of static. Still no resonant upgrade from Laurie, so it can't be a Christian. I don't think. 
I don't think Laurie would let uh, two ciphers go through as Christians. It's got to be Caprice. So that's Jeremy's barrier breaker. The only thing he is missing, and especially with Overmind not in play currently, he hasn't got an answer for centuries. Chopbot 3000 is a card that's going to let Jeremy uh, trash an install card at the start of his turn to either remove a tag or draw a card. So he can use that to just get rid of some of the redundancies in his deck. So, like the Overmind next turn, um, drug dealers late game. Okay, Jackson draw. It was an Adonis in the uh, remote that Lloyd rezzed. A Batman Adonis thing. I believe um, <laughs> Laurie's actually playing three superhero uh, custom art Adonis campaigns. I believe it's Batman, Superman, and... I don't know the third. I can make a complete stab in the dark guess, but uh, I don't know. And already discards down to five. Jerry brings the RD interface into play. So you can start pressuring those centrals now. So only one piece of ice on R and D. Those criminal breakers are expensive to run. Okay, so there's a film critic, so that's gonna allow uh, Jeremy to steal and keep the source in play once he gets the source out on onto the board. Jeremy is running the source by the way. Uh, the source really nice, it's a resource. Increases the advancement requirement on all genders by one, which just really slows the clock down, especially if you're uh, when Laurie's using the sort of standard HB never advance here, where he just plays a load of free twos. Just means that he can't put anything in. If he wants to put something in and score it, he's gonna have to signal to Jeremy that it's an agenda by advancing it at least once. One of the many strong points of ETF, of course, is that never advanced strategy where you can just put free twos out, leave them out. It's an advanced concept up there. Oh, uh, yeah, put them out and not advance them, meaning that you basically bait the runner into do you want to run this? It could just be an upgrade or an asset, or is it actually an agenda? But something that the source just makes harder for Lorry to do without biotic. I'm not sure if Lorry's playing biotic from memory. Okay, Jeremy has elected to steal the concept hopper outright and trash the full guy to prevent the New Angeles City Hall from being trashed. New Angeles City Hall does normally get trashed once you steal an agenda. So there is the source going on to supplier. And yeah, as I say, that will uh, just sort of kill Laurie's never advanced plan. Interesting as well, if Laurie is playing GFIs just to move from four four advanced, uh, four agenda points to the end game seven, it actually means that a GFI has to stay on the table for two runner turns rather than the standard one. Normally with GFI you can install and double advance to just then trip it out on your next turn. You can't do that with the source out on the table because it makes it a 6-3 rather than a 5-3. So Laurie's put another upgrade on HQ now, which uh, has to be a Christian, surely. <laughs> Laurie just confirmed with Jeremy that he wants to turn those multiple dice into two fives, and there's a sort of awkward silence as Jeremy, I think, was possibly just a little confused there. Uh, the judge just letting the players know there's 15 minutes left in the round. Jeremy's deck can be slow, and quite a few of his games have gone to time or pushed quite late into time. 
So Laurie did sort of, um, not to say flying out of the gates, but did have a relatively quick start. Uh, well, up those four points quite quick, and but now Jeremy, as you can see from that card on Jeremy's side of the board, his board state's just sort of set up where he wants it to be, starting to really control what's going on in the game. So Jeremy runs Jackson, forcing Laurie to uh, remove Jackson from the game. Yeah, Laurie returns three face down cards into R and D. Uh, I wonder if Jeremy will go and check those other face down cards. Okay, so Jeremy runs R and D and clicks through. Trash is an Ash. She's a GFI, which he's going to put, and he's just going to steal that outright and lose the New Angeles City Hall. So we're even up now, four apiece for these two players. And there's a full guy for the final click. I thought he gained some money from Batman Adonis. So Jeremy doing okay for money. He's got answers for anything that isn't a sentry in terms of ice. Laurie installs another upgrade in that server. So we've already got Breaker Bay res, and there's two unrest cards. So presumably those are Ash and Caprice. Still don't know what the two upgrades on HQ are. If um, Ash and Caprice are both unique cards, so resing either of those on one of the two servers would make it uh, more punishing to res the other one. Yeah, so the Chopbot kills the drug dealer, draws a card. Uh, so the source is still actually not in play, it's on the supplier. Jeremy, uh, Presumably, just going to bring it into play next time Laurie installs something in that remote. It's interesting. So, it does mean Laurie, even though the source isn't in play, Laurie does need to be uh, stay mindful of size if he is going to try and score out in that remote. That he does have to install and advance the card, even if it is a free two, because Jeremy will get a turn to respond and just bring the source into play. With Jeremy having Dr. Lovegood and Film Critic, he can get round the drawback on the source for himself. So he runs R&D, sees a victor. Gets some money from the compromised employee there every time Laurie reses a piece of ice. So Jeremy uses click four on a credit to break the victor and then also breaks that inner piece of ice. Sees a project for Trubius which he's going to score. So Jeremy now on six. Any agenda is going to win the game for him here. Uh, this does make it really tough for Laurie. So anything that Laurie goes to score out He's aware that he needs to be able to re protect it with Caprice Ash. So he's installed a card. He hasn't advanced it, which means either he's forgotten the source is on supplier or that's not an agenda. Or he's banking on Jeremy not installing it, but that's not going to happen yet. With Jeremy six points to the good, only needing still one more agenda, there's no reason for him not to install that. Chopbot gets rid of the drug dealer, which will draw a card. So 
So yeah, Laurie's good start here has just really sort of disappeared right now. Laurie's only out in this situation really is Ash and Caprice. So Jeremy's going to check it. Click a credit to break Victor. This is the thing with Bioroids and E3 feedback implants. You can actually run without breakers. I don't think Jer uh, Laurie's playing any of the 2.0 Bioroids. So everything's only a click to break. Oh, so there's a Turing. And a Res on a Caprice. So Laurie values whatever's in this server. Both players just decide what's going into the Caprice here. Jeremy quite confident. And yeah. Laurie spends one credit to Jeremy's two. So that will end the run and keep him out. But if that is a free two, then it's still going to have to stay there for another turn. Running R&D. It could be that Laurie's gone really ballsy and put a GFI out there and it's just going to triple advance this turn, triple advance next turn. It does mean having to keep him out for two more turns. Or well, for two turns total, it would be one more turn after this one. Laurie considering whether to res any of that R&D ice. And it just wants to check Jeremy's heap quickly. No res on the outer ice. And no res on that upgrade. The upgrade's a breakaway, so that's just a bluff. Sees a Superman Adonis campaign and a Viper. <laughs> Laurie lets out a big sigh of relief there. So Jeremy just scans some cards. Laurie makes his mandatory draw. Is he going to advance whatever that card is? So he is triple advancing that card. So that's a GFI. So, Jeremy knows he's got to get in and beat the Caprice and quite likely an Ash now as well. That is the game for Laurie. Or Jeremy can just go for R&D and hope to get the uh, card he needs out of the one card he hasn't seen. We do know actually there's an Adonis. Was the Adonis the first? If the Adonis is the second card, Jeremy can go in and trash it to then go back and access two. I think the Adonis was the top card of R&D, so I think... Laurie's actually just drawn the Adonis into hand. So all the pressure on Jeremy now just to decide whether he wants to go for R&D or that remote. If he doesn't score this turn, he knows the game's gone. So what can Jeremy do? There's no cards left in his stack. He's got a small selection of cards is hand to work with and what's on the table. And this is this is really tense for Jeremy now. This is the difference between him going into the finals of this store championship or being knocked out as third place. So yeah, all the pressure in the world now with Jeremy. He knows he's really got to be flawless in his decision making here. So what's he gonna do? Uh, Laurie just pointing, I think, pointing out the fact that everything is in the heap, so he can say more things. He's gonna, yeah, double. 
double click same old thing to calling in favours for a ton of money and this is going to give him a, a best two shots at this server so he's going in um, yeah manages so yeah this is the side game to decide it and what's he going to spend all the pressure and so yeah that's going to keep Jeremy out Jeremy now last click is going to run R&D he needs to get something out of this he's already seen the top card which was a viper um, What's Laurie going to do? And now this is where the commentary gets really awkward because despite various restarts and tweaks with settings, uh, my video uh, hopefully is playing fine for you, but for me it is horribly, horribly out of sync, uh, dropping frames, and I literally cannot see what's going on. I'm looking at a image approximately 12 seconds behind what you're seeing so we're going to see what this second card is um, spoiler alert it is the winning agenda um, and Jeremy is going to win this game by the very skin of his teeth with the last click of the last turn he possibly could before Lohi would score out so yeah hopefully that video quality is going to come out fine for you um, for me, I have no clue what's going on. I can see two players smiling and nothing's moving. Uh, my video equipment is terrible, apparently. Uh, so Jeremy makes his way back into the finals versus Simon, who he will rematch for the finals, which are coming up soon.